we're going to do here this evening is, first of all, thank our sponsors. There are four of them. Um, the Swatara Watershed Association is your primary sponsor. League of Women Voters, uh, people are here helping us in that regard, uh, doing the timing. We want to try to keep this in a format that moves along, so they're going to be doing that for us. The Linda Farrell, um, I live in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and I, uh, I feel like I'm in an, uh, one of those meetings. I have pipelines in my yard, uh, in my field. Um, uh, I'm here to talk to you about the holistic approach of Marcellus Shale, which includes the pipeline infrastructure that we're all going to need in order to uh, move the fuel from the wells to the consumer. So um, it, this is really difficult to, to read, um, and it's really kind of my notes as well as the, the PowerPoint. Um, so forgive me for the uh, Apple Macintosh problem here, but that is an aerial view of a, uh, a well site, and you should know that the uh, the roadway is that that exactly that is a um, a construction roadway. It is not the pipelines. From that point, there will be pipelines that will carry the fuel. So um, so Marcella Shell fuel doesn't Marcella Shell clay doesn't just bring to us fuel, it brings pipeline infrastructure uh, to our environment as well. Um, this map, uh, and I'm going to, you know, get sit down. Okay, in, um, on this map you'll see a little picture frame, and uh, that is uh, the, the northern tier of Lebanon County, which Joe Allen spoke about earlier, which houses Marcella Shale. The, the blue areas in this map are Marcella Shale, and as we've heard before, it's part of the Devonian Shale. After the Marcella Shale, they'll be back and they'll be able to drill the Utica Shale. So the, the companies, the, the industry, the gas industry is very invested in this project. This is a business. It's not a project. This is a business. And after Marcellus, Utica Shale is the next resource. So they're very vested in getting an infrastructure into the state that will help deliver the fuel to the market. Yeah. Um, so let's take that a little step further. Um, in the top photograph, the top map is, uh, again, Lebanon County. Um, bring it down to the far right-hand side. And the map down there is uh, a map of the infrastructure of oil and gas lines in Pennsylvania as of 2009. Um, as Mike indicated, there's a heavy infrastructure in the western part of the state and across the northern tier of the state. But there's also a very heavy infrastructure along the southern and southeast section of the state. Uh, this is a business. The, the, the industry has, has known where the shale is for decades. It's just been a matter of how to extract it and how to transport it. Now, if you take a look in that bottom right-hand corner, um, you'll see that the northern tier of Lebanon County does not have much of a pipeline infrastructure. So I would say that that is going to be one of the largest issues that you will be addressing is not just the Marcella Shale, but how are they going to get this stuff to the market? How are they going to transport it from the wellhead to the customer, to the market? Uh, these are two photographs um, that I put in here to, to help you understand why you need to know about pipelines. Why should you care? Why should you learn about pipelines? Top right hand corner is a photograph of Appomattox, Virginia in 2008. There was an explosion that mm, some of you may or may not have heard about um, that, uh, that took out an 1125 feet di diameter in that burn. It was a 30 inch pipe. It wasn't discovered until six months later that the, the, in, investigate, the inspection of that pipe that had been done three months prior to the explosion just simply hadn't been read. Simply hadn't been read. It would have indicated that there was corrosion. These lines were late in 1950, so we've got a very uh, an aging infrastructure in the state of Pennsylvania, in the country, but in the state of Pennsylvania, pipelines typically were built to last about 50 years. You can do the math on that one. Um, the, the Appomattox explosion, follow that line down to that little uh, development, that's in Chester County. So the line that exploded in, in uh, Appomattox runs 
through the country and through this development. And yes, it does come that close to that house. So we have an opportunity. There's, there are going to there are wells already drilled. Regardless of how many wells that are coming, we are going to have pipeline infrastructure expanded. We have the opportunity to be informed, educated, and to prevent that kind of exposure to all of you folks, anyone else who's dealing with new pipelines. So we can get it right. Um, I think I, I have up there, there are an estimated 35,000, and Joanne said the same thing, in, in about 10 years, 8 to 10 years. It's another reason you want to learn about pipelines. When a pipeline is this close to your house, when a pipeline is on your land, period, you've got property devaluation, you pay the taxes on your land, but your property is devalued. The companies will not acquiesce to that. They will not tell you that you have property devaluation. You also have a lack of use of land. You are limited to how you can use the right of way for a pipeline. And safety. Um, if, you, if you can see in this, this photograph on the top right hand side, there's a basketball net on top of a pipeline. Um, these folks are not comfortable having their children play in the backyard. They're not comfortable living in their house now that they know about the Appomattox explosion. And the photo down here is just a, a, a photo of what it looks like when a pipeline is being constructed. So this is really, I wish it were a little bit larger, but this is a um, wellhead to the consumer diagram. And it gives you a sense of what the process is from the wellhead to the consumer. You have the wellhead over here on the top left-hand side. And the wellhead has gathering lines. They're usually small lines, smaller lines than transmission lines. The gathering lines run to a processing or a treatment plant. Then they run through transmission lines, which are larger lines that carry the, the fuel to a compressor station. Compressor stations are located anywhere between every 40 to 100 miles. 40 to 100 miles compressor stations. They can be next to your house. They can be wherever they need to be in order to process, continually compress gas as it goes through the system to the uh, marketplace. They're noisy. Um, they have noxious uh, fumes emitted from them. Um, they run on other fuels, and, um, and they are every 40 to 50 um, miles. Then you go through transmission lines again, through more compressor stations, and ultimately to distribution lines. So that is the hierarchy of, of pipelines. You've got gathering lines that go to transmission lines, that go to compressor stations, that go to distribution lines. And the, and the lines that exploded and, and caused death in Allentown were distribution lines. So who regulates them? Um, as I said, the, the, the type of pipeline is important because different pipelines are regulated by different agencies. It gets very confusing. Um, and that's a little scary that it's confusing that our safety is um, is hard to understand as to who do I call if there's a problem. So the gathering lines right now are regulated by the industry. The siting of the, of the gathering lines, the regulation of the gathering lines, the safety of the gathering lines is self-regulated. Uh, if anyone here is familiar with the uh, laser Marcellus uh, legal issues that have been going on, uh, PUC has recently overturned the original ruling that laser Marcellus should not be granted public utility status and it appears that in the next few weeks they will be granted public utility status. What that means is that they're setting a precedent for gathering lines to become viewed as public uh, utilities and therefore they have the power of eminent domain. Um, can you go, do you know how to go back one more? Thank you, thank you. Um, so, so that's the gathering lines. Transmission lines come in two flavors. Um, you've got the interstate and you've got intrastate. The intrastate are the lines that run within the boundaries of the state that you're in. Um, who regulates them? It's a little murky. Could be the state, could be the feds, it's a little murky. 
Um, the, um, basically, the gas industry um, is also a part of the regulation on that. <coughs> Pardon me. Interstate are the lines that cross state boundaries or go to other countries. Um, the U.S. Department of Transportation. The U.S. Department of Transportation is in charge of safety, and that is because we are transporting fuel. Doesn't matter how you're transporting it, whether it's by car or rail, by pipeline, the U.S. Department of Transportation's Pipeline Hazardous Safety Materials Administration is responsible for safety of interstate uh, pipe transmission lines. Um, the Federal Energy Regulation Commission, or FERC, is in charge of siting. And, um, and uh, this is my cliff notes on the FERC process because, as Tom can probably well tell you, it, is, it could take an entire weekend to go through FERC and you still wouldn't understand it. Um, initially, the siting process occurs with the gas company. Doesn't involve state, county, local commissioners. No one needs to be notified. FERC doesn't need to be notified. The industry takes a look at where they want to site the pipelines and they pay their engineers to come up with a siting plan and maps. Then they go to FERC, the Federal Energy Regulation Commission, and they ask FERC, they pre file and they ask FERC to review their plan. And at that point, they are required to give notification to affected landowners. Now, the industry, the gas industry, is the determining entity as to who is an affected landowner or entity. Um, the notices only go out by direct mail. They are posted in the paper. So it's up to the community who is involved in Marcella Shale development to keep track of what the industry is doing as far as their pipelines. You better believe they're looking now at where their pipelines need to go. It just makes business sense. You should also know that if your home, your dwelling, is more than 50 feet from a proposed pipeline project, you are not considered an affected landowner. Um, I, I only know that because I happen to be one of those people. The, those three pipes that rumbled under my feet are more than 50 feet away from my house. So I am not entitled to notification of any projects that are to be uh, completed on, on that land. So in the filing process with FERC, the most important thing that you need to know about is, is a motion to intervene. As soon as you, a pre-filing comes out, you need to, your commissioners need to, your county, your uh, municipalities need to cost-free file for uh, interviewership. It gives you the ability to uh, participate in any court actions, and it gives you the right to be heard by FERC. If you don't file as an intervener, FERC absolutely will ignore any comments that you put forth on the project. That's, those are the rules, and that's the way it goes. So then a file